So I was farming Archmage recently and I'd been doing it on and off for like over a year and I just finished it yesterday. And it had me thinking, what is the botting scene like now in EQW? Because back in 2012, it used to be absolutely massive and majority of players I knew were botting. But then not long after, there was a huge botting ban wave by AE, where they banned a ton of accounts that were botting, and it kind of dropped the player base by a serious amount. And ever since then, they haven't done something similar. And nowadays, even if you were to bot, AE wouldn't ban you, at least not permanently, even if you were to bot quite obviously. And the main reason I think for this is because AE just doesn't want to have that huge drop in player base again. Because whether player is bought or not, at the end of the day, they're still going to be paying for stuff. And that's what keeps AE and their games alive. However, they have decided to take a different approach to how they're going to combat botting. And that is by changing how their farms work. I think this is actually probably their best approach yet. Because let's think about what actually motivates someone to bot. When they have really, really long farms and they're just completely mindless spamming, it's going to make it more likely that someone wants to bot. However, when they change some of the quests for some of the classes like Lord of Order, which is 7 days of daily quests, and for each one, uh, there is at least some amount of like doing storyline, and that will make it less likely that people will bot and they'll just finish the storyline instead. And it's less like mindless spamming and more actually doing stuff in the game. And that's not the only class they've done. If you look at Archmage, it has a ton of other stuff that will make it less likely for someone to bot. Now, they haven't made it completely bot proof, of course there'll still be players, but has it actually reduced the number of people botting? So I decided to check out how many people I thought were botting, like roughly. I searched up AQW Botting Legion Revenant and came across this video. This guy seems to be the biggest uh, botting YouTuber, and this is pretty much his video on how to bot Legion Revenant. So this was made about 1 month and 4 days ago and has 3,300 views. I decided to check my own video, which is probably the most uh, popular one for farming Legion Revenant, and this is without botting. So I checked the analytics. So in the last 28 days, it had 6,300 views. So this is less time than the other video, and it has like double the views. If I was to approximate, this would mean about 70% of people are not botting, and 30% of people are. Of course, this isn't a perfect estimate, but you get the point. I decided to do the same thing for Void High Lord. There are two videos here, 10 months and 11 months ago. Combined, they have 38,000 views. So I decided to see how many views did my non-botting version get in the last 11 months. And in the last year, it got 83,000 views. So take away the first month and it has pretty much double what the other two videos have combined. And keep in mind, this is a way older video. Whereas theirs would be more likely to be pushed within the last year just because it's newer. So even one of the most common botted classes, VHL, seems to have more people looking for a legit solution rather than a botting solution. Now, if I were to check maybe Lord of Order or some other class that's less likely to be botted, the, the results would probably favour non-botters even more. I just showed Void Hyrule and Legion Revenant. So overall, if you look at the number of people botting nowadays, it does seem to have decreased somewhat at least. And it does seem that probably the majority of players are non-botters. And it begs the question, why do botters even bot? And obviously they do want to get a class faster and easier without effort. But if you do get it, then where is the satisfaction in having the class? There's no point in logging on, turning on the bot, and coming back a day later seeing your class has been farmed for you. Because it just doesn't have any value, you, because you didn't do anything. It's like buying a game, and instead of actually playing it, you just come back a week later and a bot has finished the whole game for you. So you'd expect that these botting players are more likely to leave AKW earlier rather than later, because after botting for enough items, surely even they will get bored and realize that they're not enjoying it. Now, there was one more thing AE did to maybe decrease the number of botters and maybe just save their game by creating a feeling of community and teamwork, and that was Ultra Bosses. Ultra Bosses have been absolutely huge for AKW. And because the first few Ultra Bosses were such a success, AE, of course, have made a dozen more. And they've even made some for older farms, like Void, High Lord, and Legion Revenant. And personally, that's how I got Legion Revenant. I actually used the Ultra Dage Ultra Boss. The only thing I'd say is that they've gone a little too far with the most recent Ultra Boss, Malgo, and they made this a little too difficult. When it gets to the point where you have an Excel sheet to explain how to kill a monster in a game, you know you've gone just a little too far. I mean, this doesn't even really require skill. It requires intense, intense focus and memorization and make sure you don't mess up your role. And then also asking someone else on the internet to create this Excel file for you. Because no individual player would be able to figure this out. 
unless you know they just copied it from a video on youtube or a discord server or whatever it's like someone said in the comments this is so completely what next time we're going to do arctic's entertainment taxes for the next ultra boss why so complicated at this point i think doing taxes for ae would be easier than malgor let me know in the comments if you guys found Malgo really difficult or if you think you could probably do harder. But of course there are a group of people who love these kind of bosses and they're insane enough to basically speedrun all of them within literal seconds and complete pretty much every boss in the game in 10 minutes. However, even ultra bosses aren't completely immune from bots. Shockingly enough, I don't want to advertise this, but I think it's pretty well known already to the botters. You can actually bot ultra bosses. I was only made aware of this by someone on Discord, but there are actually some clients you can use to solo the Ultra Boss. So they're no longer just botting for NSOD and stuff, but they're even botting things like Malgo, Darkon, and Dage. So even with everything AE have done to discourage botting and eliminate botters, there are still people who have managed to overcome these barriers and actually still bot. However, to be fair to AE, they actually have done a pretty good job as this isn't a very well known botting method and most people do ultras in the legit method even people who may bot for stuff like nsod and what's even better about nsod nowadays is that the best way to farm it is actually the daily quests when i was a member i finished the whole thing in like 30 days only doing the daily quests i didn't even need my sepulchre's doom knight armor to do it because i was just doing the dailies and this is the kind of content i think is best for the game it requires players to do teamwork use classes that make sense together, learn their abilities, know the best synergy between classes, and actually pull off really difficult kills like Flibertiest Gibbet. And also it forms more friends and groups in the game so they can do these things daily with the same group. Whereas the other alternative is sitting in a room watching anime and spamming 2-3-4 on your keyboard, which is probably the reason why there are so many botters in the first place, where you could actually have a fun game where you're killing monsters in a unique way. And it's funny seeing as how AE have now hired one of the biggest bot makers, Spider133. He didn't only make AQ Lite, he also used to make bots. But now he has discontinued both AQ Lite and all the bots in favor of helping out AE make a better Arctic's launcher, which he definitely has. People ask me all the time about my settings in the game, and the answer is always click on settings, click advanced settings, and read through them. However, at the end of the day, no matter what, there are some people who are going to be botting no matter how little sense it makes. Even in this example here, I'm talking to someone botting this monster like 1% damage at a time. He's using Chrono Assassin to kill something with 900k HP. I'm asking this guy to use support class so we can actually kill him quickly, but here he is mindlessly botting at 1000 damage per second. So yeah, no matter what you do, there's some people you can never change or switch, and this is pretty much the result. Anyways, let me know in the comments what you guys think. Have you guys ever bought it before? Do you still bot? And do you think we could ever reach a botless AQW? Also, in case you're wondering, I do have Paladin and Chronomon, so I just got it yesterday. I will try and make a video on it sometime soon. Same for Archmage, but that might come out a bit later. My general thoughts on it, though, is that it is insanely good. Not just the skill animations, the skill icons, but it's pretty much the best farm in the game if you have the right enhancements. And even if you don't, it's still super, super good. Anyways, like the video if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, and see you guys next time. Also, don't forget to join the Discord, link in description, and goodbye.